first Mr. Irrelevant to play in and win a Super Bowl. You're the epitome of that meme of where it started to, to where it's going. <laughs> yeah, it's really been a blessing. Like my, I look back on my whole career, um, you know, being the last guy drafted back in 2009, um, just kind of seeing the, the, the places that I've been. I've been really blessed to be in some great places. Played in Kansas City for about five years, Tennessee for six, and then, you know, this is my second year here with Tampa Bay. And man, it's been a blessing. It's cool to see the way the Lord's put me in great situations and worked with some great teammates. And I'm just really humbled that I still get the opportunity to come and do this uh, going into my 13th year. And one of those teammates, you got a fellow Mr. Irrelevant here with you now. And I've heard you're maybe a little bit harsh on the other Mr. Irrelevance. Maybe there are some pranks involved. Uh, is, is that an accurate statement? I, I can't give away all my secrets on uh, we're, we're recording this, Casey. So uh, yeah, no, there, I have a good little prank that I've pulled on. I've actually had a couple other Mr. Irrelevant teammates, believe it or not, along the way. People would always hear about it. And of course, they'd say, man, don't you get a truck? And don't you get this and that? And I'd be like, oh, yeah, I got an Escalade. I got this. You know, Disney gets behind it, they give you a million dollars, and because it's gifted, it's tax-free, you oh know, which of course, God. none of this is true. <laughs> and so guys that would be, you know, the two picks away from being Mr. Irrelevant, be like, oh my gosh, I knew if I could have been two picks later, I would have gotten all, you, you know. You got everybody wanting to be Mr. Irrelevant. Right, you make everybody want to be Mr. Irrelevant. And then sometimes I just forget to tell them, and I think to this day, they still believe it, so. They're still uh, waiting for that million yeah, dollars to kick in. They're right. like, next that's paycheck. Right. That's right, that's right. <laughs> that's incredible. Okay, so you are a guy who, you love to have fun with your teammates, you love to pull some pranks. I feel like this sort of lightheartedness of you probably serves well as a kicker, that this feels like it is such a pressure-packed role and can sometimes be so solitary. Do you feel like that aspect of you helps you be so clutch, helps you in being a kicker? Yeah, I think so. I think you, there's, you gotta have perspective. Obviously, you know what I do, uh, probably a lot of people would say is a, is a pressure-packed position, you know. If, I get nervous for you, for the record, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's fair. That's good. You sound like my wife. I yeah. think she's just more nervous than I do. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think there's some things that help me with that. I know that, um, number one, I think preparing in practice is probably very important, you know, getting confident in doing that in practice. That translates to the game. But then, you know, obviously I love the game of football. I give it everything I've got, but there's also other things in my life that are really important. And so it takes some pressure off, you know, when you have your faith, when you have your family and you have those those things, your priorities. It, it really allows you, frees you up and allows you to go play free on the football field. And I think those are things that have really helped my career tremendously. And explain how you went from, I mean, injury, free agent, not knowing what your football future looked like, to then coming to the Bucks and ending up a Super Bowl champion. That's a, that's a heck of a journey in about a six month time frame. Yeah, it was. It's, um, you know, I look back, my, what was it? I guess I was in my sixth year with the Titans. And, um, you know, really had had five great years there leading up to that. Things were rocking along great. Uh, and then, you know, had a little bit of an injury pop up and tried to bounce back from it and just didn't, didn't play the way I wanted to. And, you know, we know what happens in the NFL when that happens and, you know, you move on and, you know, I remember going through it and thinking, man, why, like, why now? You don't understand it. Um, you know, you go through some adversity. It's tough. It's not very fun. Um, and then you look back on it and, and you kind of fast forward and you see that it led me to here and it, you know, led me to be with some great guys on this team, some great coaches and, you know, have a chance to, to play with, with the greatest player of all time and all those things. And of course, you know, you guys know how it ends. We go out and win the Super Bowl last year and I look back on it. And I'm like, man, if I hadn't gone through all that, I never would have been here. And so it was a blessing. Um, it's cool to look back on that. And it's something that I think grows me as a person and um, just is, is really cool to experience. And I heard there was one moment in particular where you knew the Buccaneers were the team you needed to go play for. Yeah, it was neat. I know this story's kind of gotten circulated around a little bit, and I was actually, I'd gotten a call, it was towards the end of August, and I came down here for a workout. You know, you're trying to figure out where things are gonna go, and um, you know, I just been praying. And that's, I try to make decisions like that, I don't get it right all the time, but I was just kind of torn. I was saying, Lord, show me where you want me to be. Um, you know, if this is for me, show me. If not, that's great too, I'll trust you with it. And I'll never forget, it was, the night before, right after that workout, I walked out of the my hotel that was right over here at the uh, kind of by the airport, and a thunderstorm had just gone by. And I looked over, and you could see Raymond James Stadium from the parking lot of the hotel I was staying in. And it still kind of gives me chills talking about it. But there was a, a rainbow that looks like it's coming directly into Raymond James Stadium, and I was just kind of like, okay, I'm not like a huge sign person, but I, I can't really ignore that one. Then you know, last season was it was a really special season. So it's just kind of one of those things that, that gives you chills when you think about it. That's incredible. And 13 for 13 field goals in the playoffs, 21 for 22 extra points. I mean, talk about a clutch guy in, in the pressure when it happened. And of course, this is a team that the storylines had been that they were kicking woes. And, and I'm sure that kind of adds to 
to some of the lore and the pressure and all of that. So how do you feel like you were able to come in and make this situation such a successful one for you and that those past storylines didn't have to matter for you coming in here? You know, I was really blessed to work with, uh, with Bradley and Zach. You know, those guys do such a great job on the field. And uh, our chemistry, what we have on the field, uh, off the field as well, I think that's so important. You know, I trust those guys. Um, as good as they are on the field, they're even better people off the field. And so I'm really fortunate to get to work with guys like that. Get, get to play for some great coaches. Really fell into a great situation. It's not something that I can really take credit for. I give the credit to those guys. Uh, you know, they make my job a lot easier. And I'm just fortunate that I get to go to work every day with guys like that. I think it's safe to say you're no longer Mr. Irrelevant in terms of a title now. And you've always talked about how you don't feel like people recognize you. You get to fly under the radar, you know, both of being a kicker and not necessarily looking like you're 6'5", 300 and some odd pounds. You just get to wander around Tampa all incognito. Are, is there a chance you're going to start flashing the Super Bowl ring a little bit so that you're a little bit less Mr. Irrelevant out in public? Well, you know, I probably won't wear it out in public, but I do know that my five-year-old son is like going to be all over that. Like, he is so excited. He talks about it every day. So I have a feeling that I'll be wearing it around the house a lot. And if I'm not wearing it, he's definitely going to be wearing, be wearing it. it. So it might fit on about four gonna, of his it's fingers. It's going to fit on his wrist yeah, over there. Yeah. yeah, we could probably fit on his wrist. But um, it's going to be fun seeing him get to get to play with that and see that. So that's a, that's a special deal, something I'm really thankful for.